um, you, that's about UConn, or I think, would you compare them to, or how did they compare to last year's UConn, especially at the, uh, at the five spot? I think at the same point in the season, they're better. Uh, if you go back to last year's team, I think they were eight and six in the league. Uh, and I think the Big East is better top to bottom than it was a year ago. So to win, you know, 14 in a row or whatever it's been now in, in this conference um, with a target on their back, just they don't have a lot of missing pieces. You know, they've, you know, you know Klingon and Sampson at the five, so they kind of give you a couple different looks and they rotate those guards. You bring a guy like DR off the bench who's really, really talented and would start for a lot of teams. Uh, and they, you know, they just don't get shook, and it, and it's, it appears to be a different guy every night uh, on the offensive end, and then of course, they're elite defensively. Coach, you have to uh, obviously big game, but you have to tell your guys not to make it too <coughs> more bigger than it is. You know, being the number one team in the country, it's going to be. I mean, you got the, you know, pom poms out, the whole deal. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big game. Let's face it. I mean, it's a important game as we continue to try to build our resume. Uh, you only get so many shots uh, during your lifetime. A lot of people never get an opportunity to play against the number one team. And as an institution, we've, we've never been able to beat the number one team. So to have the opportunity, I think our guys embrace that. Uh, we didn't play very well uh, at, at UConn, and certainly they had a lot to do with that. And I think our guys are eager to you know, try to see if we can play a little bit better and put ourselves in a position late in the game to have a chance. But the, this is a real talented team, but I've got a mature group. Um, you know, they've their approach has been pretty consistent all year, and I would expect that tomorrow will be the same. What, what was is the biggest negative at UConn that you want to see tomorrow night? Uh, I'd like to be able to make a pass. <laughs> you know, we, we were it seemed like we were running for our lives, and and, and looking back on it, we, you know, we we got some decent shots at times that we didn't we didn't make. Uh, I mean, you can't have live ball turnovers against UConn. You know, some teams that they may or may not score. UConn's going to score. They're they're that electric when they when they turn you over and attack and transition. Um, and then they've just been an absolute beast on the offensive glass. And we've got some matchups that aren't great, uh, so we're gonna have to fight tooth and nail and and you know hope it bounces to us once in a while uh, because they've they've really dominated almost everybody on the glass. What the tougher of a challenge is it? Playing for limited minutes in the first matchup, you know, getting a fully healthy this time around. How much tougher is that? Yeah, I mean, he's he's you know one of the most talented guys at the rim uh, in the country, defensively especially. And his offense, it seems like his timing has come back, and he's they're they're using him more um, than they did the first time we played it. But he certainly had an impact on that game. And um, you know, like I said, the, the combination of he and Sampson, it's two very different looks, uh, but you have rim protection with both guys and. Uh, but they're, uh, you know, if you can break down their first layer of defense, you got to deal with him. How rowdy do you want this building tomorrow? Yeah, I think it'll be fun. You know, I, I hope we have a bunch of students, and you know, they they have a they let the guard down and have a lot of fun. We have to make this as difficult a place to play as there is in the conference. And uh, you know, UConn, you know, they call out a lot of their set plays, and it'd be nice if. You know, the guys on the floor couldn't hear him when he was trying to call them out because it was too loud in this place. So, um, you know, we'll certainly get energy from our crowd. And um, But, you know, baskets are going to be hard to come by because they're, they're hard to score on, and I'm hopeful that that our defense is going to be the same. What do uh, I guess, what's the execution plan against their ball screen coverages? <coughs> Donovan versus Sampson? And yeah, it's different. You know, uh, you know they're, they're more aggressive with Sampson, uh, more drop coverage with Klingon. Um, so you just have to understand who's in the game and what's going to be available. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I think our guys have seen enough of both coverages that they understand what they need to do. How hard is their pace to guard in the quarter? Court? I mean, they are running through those sets. They, they seem to run at them. Yeah, the, yeah, their movement is 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 elite, and uh, you know, it, as crazy as it sounds, when 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 Klingon was out and they had to go small. Uh, you know, I felt like their screening activity and some things they did off the ball actually got got better. So now you had the big back into it, and they still have those reads on switches and when you're switching, when you're not switching, and they, you know when you go under a screen, when you chase a screen, and they, they don't make many mistakes. Like if if you make a mistake, they're gonna they're gonna make the read and they're gonna make you pay for it. Uh, they do they do an unbelievable job of that. And and like I said earlier, they're an unselfish team. They don't they don't really seem to care who gets the credit. And when a team is as talented as they are, that's a that's a scary, scary good attribute to have when, when nobody cares, you know. Like the, high, the 
highest ranked win in program history was that three over number three Villanova. What, what do you remember for that day, and, and, and did it energize the program? Oh, geez, I don't even I don't remember what I had for breakfast. So I mean, <laughs> you know, we played a lot of ranked teams during our time, and, and uh, you know, I, I can't remember if that was the one in in Philadelphia, or if it was the one here that when they won the national championship and we were their last win. So. I mean, those are great wins, and you you know, in the in a league like the Big East, you, you're just going to have some opportunities to play those kind of games because there's so many good teams, and this is another example of that. Uh, Coach, I got to ask about Baylor shot. You know, like he's he's playing at such an elite level, and he's got the streak of double doubles going. In. And obviously, you knew he was multi-talented, but is he playing better than you even thought? He could? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the one thing when he transferred from South Dakota State, I, I felt like his scoring and his playmaking and his ability to make decisions would transfer to this level. Uh, the thing I wondered about was the rebounding. And he's, you know, not only is he, as it transferred, he's become a better rebounder. And, and a lot of credit goes to his work with Jeremy Anderson in the off season to get a little bit more athletic, a little stronger, a little quicker off his feet. Um, and, you know, he's he's a killer when he gets in there. Like he's kind of go get that basketball. And um, he's going to be really important for us tomorrow night uh, because, you know, from the guard position, you know, a lot of times your bigs are in fights. You know, Caravan's elite at going to the glass. Uh, both their bigs, Sampson and Klingon, are elite at going to the glass. So you got to get tied up in a blockout. Somebody's got to go get the ball. And, you know, Baylor's got to figure out a way to get Castle off first and then go get it. Uh, but he's been terrific. It's, uh, you know, he's a big reason we, we are where we are. I know the focus is UConn. You guys were just outside the top 16 of the committee's announcement. <coughs> Does it really matter to you to get a, to get a top four seed or to kind of whatever? I, I don't know that it really matters. I mean, I, I think anytime you you wear a white jersey the first round of the NCAA tournament and you're not in Dayton, it means you've had a hell of a year uh, because it's hard to do. You know, it's it's really hard to, to, to be the home team in the NCAA tournament in that first round. So if you're if you if you've done that, then you've had an incredible year. And, you know, we've positioned ourselves, you know, we're in position to be in position to have a really good end of this year. Um, but also the schedule is really daunting. So we have plenty of opportunities that are going to prepare us, but uh, you know, we're not paying any much attention to that. At the end of the day, it's more about matchups than it is where you're seated. Um, and unfortunately, we don't get to pick those matchups. Have you been the catalyst for how good you guys have been in transition offensively the last two or three games? Defensive stop, defensive rebound. I mean, that's where it starts. Without that, there is no transition. So, but you know, I think that I think when you've had some success at that, I think um, you know it's like that carrot that you the, the rabbit's chasing. You know, like it's uh, uh, the guys know that good things will wait await on the other end if they run. And sometimes it's going to be for them, and sometimes running creates a play for somebody else. And um, you know, to do it on the road at Xavier at Butler, uh, where you know. Especially Xavier, a team that's elite in transition offense, to, to kind of flip it, the script on them and their building. Um, you know, I think it speaks to how well conditioned these guys are uh, for as much as they're playing and still be able to be on the attack all the time. Two more. <clears throat> well, just to follow up with that, it seems like what's helped unlock it, I guess, from the eye test standpoint, is how well guys are running, even the ones that don't touch the ball, I guess, the ones that don't end up getting the shot up. Like, that's that that's the that's the most important part of transition offense. It's not necessarily the guy with the ball or the guy that ends up with the ball. The the play happens because of what somebody else does, and oftentimes that doesn't show up in the stat sheet because it, that guy's probably not getting an assist. He might set a screen. He might create spacing. Kalk may take a guy to the basket, and the guy gets a wide open three because Ryan ran the floor and somebody had to account for him. So, you know, that's uh, you know we show it on film all the time the importance of it, and we certainly reward it. Uh, with enthusiasm as a staff when we know that someone created something for other people. But, you know, like I said about UConn's team, you know, these our guys don't care who gets the credit either. And that's, you know, that's why this team's been so enjoyable to coach. Is there anything specific that you've noticed in terms of improvement from your team since the last time you played UConn <coughs> that you feel more comfortable going into this matchup? Uh, I mean, I don't know that you ever feel warm and fuzzy going into a matchup with UConn because uh, you know it's going to be a fist fight. Uh, but you know we've we've won some on the road and in difficult places. We have played some really good teams, and we played a team as good as UConn. No, but you know I think they're the best team in the country. So uh, it'll be a treat for our fans uh, to watch a team that's as talented as they are. And uh, you know I'm, we're going to need our A game. There's not a, not no question there, and we we have to do whatever we can to make sure they don't have theirs. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.